There are so many infant seats on the market. Let me show you the Collect Ling. It's one of my favorites. The Kleckling is one of my favorite infant seats, especially because it has a ton of like added safety features that I'm going to show you when we get to the installation portion. But first, let's do just a general overview. Whenever you get your car seat, I want you to download these free printables that we have in the description below and fill out things like height, head height clearance, weight limit, just all the details that you need for the seat. Stick it on the side of your seat where it's not gonna interfere with any of the labeling because it's a reminder for you to check those things as your baby grows. So for this seat, it has a 35 pound weight limit, but hear me say this, your kid is never gonna be 35 pounds in this car seat. Like, could you imagine carrying this around with a 35 pound baby? The thing you wanna pay more attention to is the height limit, which is 32 inches, but even more on infant seats, and this is what is most commonly missed, I miss this with my firstborn, is head height clearance. So for this seat, the rules are a teeny bit different than some other seats we work with. If you use the load leg, and if you don't know what that is, don't worry, I'm gonna show you in a minute. If you use the load leg on the base, your child's head can actually go to the very top of the shell in this car seat. If you don't use the load leg, then your child has to have one inch clearance between the top of their head and the top of their car seat. So that's something that you could write down the details on your little handy dandy sticker so you don't miss it. But I really want you to watch for that because that's how most commonly rear facing seats in general are outgrown. I'm gonna highlight for you on the base of the Kleckling some features that we love, like the load leg that I referenced, the rigid lower anchors, the ability to adjust the recline after you've installed the seat. Let's jump in the car and get to installing so I can show you all these features and a lot more. There are three ways to install the Kleckling. You can use the base, which I have right here, and you can install this base using the rigid lower anchor connectors or the vehicle seatbelt, one or the other. You can also install just the carrier portion alone using the preferred method, which is the European belt path routing. I'm gonna show you all three of those in just a second, but let's get familiar with the base first. So rigid lower anchors are one of the standout features of this car seat. They are these metal bars that come out here from the base of the seat and they attach directly to the lower anchor connector positions in your vehicle. They are a standout feature. They also make installation easy peasy. So make sure that you use these if you are gonna use the base with your Kleck Lane. A couple other things, that load leg that I referenced earlier is stored here on the bottom of the base. It's very common that people go and install their bases and they don't realize this is here. If you have a load leg and you have rigid lower anchors, please use both of them. They're phenomenal added safety features that help with that rebound effect in the event of a car crash. That means less movement for your child in the event of a car crash, which is always a good thing. So the load leg comes out just like this. You're gonna pop it pushing the button down, pull it out, and then it's going to extend as well down into the base of the vehicle. Again, I'm gonna show you all of this in action in a minute. I'm gonna leave this out so I don't forget to use it when it comes time to install the base. Other things to share with you that's a really cool part of the Ling, a lot of infant seats, you have to adjust the recline before you install the seat which means you may have to tweak it after you install. So it may require some uninstalling and reinstalling. With a Kleckling, you don't have to do that. You install the base, and then you're simply going to adjust the recline right here on top. You push this little lever and you rock this in place until you get the bubble in the required range based on the weight of your child. As I said, the other way to install this base is with the vehicle seatbelt. And this base has what's called a lock off, meaning you do not have to lock your vehicle seatbelt in order for the base to be secured. You're gonna lift this panel here. You would route your vehicle seatbelt through this blue path. This is called the belt path. You would push this little guy down until the red indicator turns to green. Let me show you how all of this works in action and the three installation methods. First up is installing the base with the rigid lower anchor connectors. So let's get the vehicle set up for us before we begin installation. 
Your vehicle seat back needs to be in the most upright locked position. Your car needs to be on level ground, which we are. And then I highly recommend that you move your seats up based on where you're gonna put the base in the car and kind of clear any clutter out of the way. Speaking of where you're gonna put the base in the car, listen, it is safe to put your car seat, whether it's an infant car seat or any other car seat, in any approved position where you can get a safe installation. There is some chatter that the center seat is the safest because it's furthest from any point of impact, but we don't have a ton of statistical data to support that. So I want you to really consider what works for you and your family and obviously what's gonna work in the vehicle that you have. So for this vehicle, I do actually have lower anchor positions in all three seats, but that's a rarity. So I'm going to show you how to install this space using the rigid lower anchors in this passenger seat. Plus I have a camera like right here, so we need some distance so I can show it to you. But you pick the approved vehicle seating position that works best for your vehicle and for your family. When your base comes out of the box, your rigid lower anchor connectors are gonna be pushed all the way in. You obviously like can't attach it this way. So you're gonna use the little button here and use that to release the rigid lower anchor connectors. And I like you to pull them all the way out. We're gonna do the same on the other side. And now they are fully lengthened. The next thing that I need to make sure is ready to go is the load leg. I already pulled it out from the bottom, as you know. In this car, there are mats that are pretty substantial. While great for like handling all the debris that comes in your car, not typically great for load legs. So when you're using a load leg, you wanna check a couple of things. First, you wanna make sure that your vehicle allows the use of a load leg. So go to that vehicle manual, look in the child passenger safety section and see if a load leg is even allowed to be used. It is for the most part, but let's say you have like stow and go seats. You can't put a load leg on where a stow and go seat would go. So that may also determine the vehicle seating position that you use, because again, I want you to use the load leg if you possibly can. I'm going to remove this mat because it can interfere with that load leg staying flat and getting the green indicator that's going to tell me it's safely installed. So this mat, you can either push it forward if that's an option, fold it up, or you may have to remove it altogether. So for this vehicle, it's out of here. All right. When I am done installing, I'll do the final check on this, but I am going to kind of lengthen the load leg just a little bit to get started. Literally, you pull this little white thing out, you can raise it and lower it. When you are installing with a load leg, and I'll show you this again at the end because it's critically important, you never want the load leg to lift the base up. You always want the base to be completely flush on the vehicle seat. So don't do anything crazy here. I'm just kind of lengthening it a little bit. All right, the base is ready to go now. Rigid lower anchor connectors extended, load leg in place. I'm gonna find those lower anchor connectors in my vehicle seat. I really do like to kind of reach my finger back there and feel them so I know the angle. Line the rigid lower anchor connectors up. And then you're gonna pop it in on one side, line it up and do the same on the other side. You should hear like an audible click. But the other thing that you will be looking for is that this indicator has turned from red to green. And that's how you'll know that your rigid lower anchors are fully attached. Now you'll remember we extended them all the way to make that process easy. Those same buttons that you use to extend the lower anchor connectors, you're gonna use now to push the base fully into the vehicle seat. So push those buttons. I like to use my knee. And you can see they're retracting back in, right? And we're getting a nice tight installation of the base up against the vehicle seat because the rigid lower anchors kind of shrunk a little bit, if you will. So you guys, the first part and of installing this base is done. <laughs> this thing is not moving like at all. Remember, a seat can move up to an inch in any direction when checked at the belt path. And with rigid lower anchors, you're gonna get one of the most secure installations ever in a matter of seconds. Next step, load leg. So let's get that load leg. Mine's actually looking pretty good. It's not lifting off the vehicle seat at all. <laughs> the indicator is green. Something I wanna tell you about a load leg, a load leg can shift a little bit when you are 
just moving your kid in and out of the seat, popping the carrier on and off. Don't panic if it's doing that. You want it to be as directly underneath the base, like in a straight line. And again, to look for the indicator being green, but you may have to shift it back into position a couple of times throughout your like infant car seat journey. No big deal. It's still gonna do its job of helping with that rebound. Okay, load legs ready to go. Rigid lower anchor connectors are in. You guys, this base is installed. <laughs> like how fast was that? The final step for us is getting the recline set. And again, we don't have to uninstall to figure out what the recline is. On this seat in particular, we've got pound usages. So based on where your child is going to be. And the good news is if you use those little stickers on the side, this is one of those reminders that you can write on there. I'm going to say we're having a newborn and I'm going to put it in the four to 11 pound range. The bubble is right in that indicator. We're ready to go. When it comes time to put the carrier portion of your base in and always practice doing this before the big day, kind of angle the seat down a little bit. I like to think like if my child's feet go in first, you could hear the audible click for this, that it popped in place. The other thing that's nice about this seat is on the release handle, the handle that we're gonna to use to release the carrier from the base, it starts off as red when the carrier's not in it, and then that red goes away when you know that this carrier is securely into the base. You can also try to pull up on the handle, you can do this with any infant seat, and if it doesn't easily remove off the base, then you know it's locked in place. For this seat in particular, the carrier handle is required to be in this upright position. Click is very kind to us and puts a sticker right on the side of the handle itself to remind us of this. Check your manual if you have a different infant seat, different requirements for different seats. One thing I want you to note on the click in general and something that we love about it is, you know, infant seats can take up a lot of space front to back. In terms of all the infant seats there are in the market, this is gonna be one of the very most compact front to back seats that you can find. I installed this in a two door Rolls Royce. <laughs> yes, it's true. It was good. We tried a lot of car seats and this is the one that works. So if you're looking for a really compact front to back, this is a phenomenal option. Let me show you how to get the carrier off the base as well. So that indicator that went from red to nothing, we are now going to use that release handle along with this other lever here, pull up at the same time and simply remove the carrier and you're on your way. The same buttons that you use to lengthen the rigid lower anchor connectors when you were installing, we're gonna do the same to get them out. So depress those buttons and pull the base out and see how the rigid lower anchor connector extended. Now's when these little red buttons here come into play. So pull those back and it's gonna easily release those rigid lower anchor connectors. And then to store them, push your button again on both sides and then pop your load leg. Now your base is back to how it was when you originally got it out of the box. Seatbelt installation is up next. Before I dive into showing you how to do seatbelt installation, like why would you use it? I just shared with you, if you were paying close attention, if you were and you're finding this video helpful, will you please click the subscribe button and like and make sure you drop any comments below with questions that you have. Thank you. So before we do seatbelt, why in the world would you use seatbelt when rigid lower anchor is like so awesome? So there would be a couple of reasons. One, you want to, that's a viable reason. Using the rigid lower anchor connectors or the vehicle seatbelt are both approved ways to install the seat, one or the other. So if you wanna use a seatbelt, feel free. For a lot of vehicles, we don't have those lower anchor positions in the middle seating position, and you may wanna put your car seat in the middle seating position. Fine, if you don't have lower anchors, use the vehicle seatbelt to install. Another reason that we often use the seatbelt installation method is if we have a really tight three across situation, rigid lower anchors, because they're rigid, have to go straight into the lower anchor connector points in the vehicle seat. So there's no room to be able to like shift it to one side of the seat or the other. If we've got super tight space in a three across, we use a seatbelt installation a lot because we can cheat the seat over to one side to gain a couple of extra inches. So sometimes that might be a reason for you to use seatbelt installation as well. Okay, let's dive in. 
We don't need to extend those rigid lower anchors because we're not using them. They're gonna stay stored, but we are absolutely going to use the load leg. So let's pop it out from the base of the seat. Again, same as with the previous installation method, vehicle seat back is in its most upright position or on level ground. And because this vehicle has a car mat that is intense, it could mess with how the load leg is able to lay flush on the, the vehicle floorboard here. So I have removed it. Double check that your vehicle allows the use of a load leg in the vehicle seating position that you choose. I'm gonna lengthen the load leg just enough so that it's hitting the floorboard, but not so it's lifting up on the base in any way. I need this base to be flush against the vehicle seat. I'll do a double check of that once we've installed as well. All right, as I shared with you, because you're paying close attention, you can change the recline after the seat is installed. So we will do that momentarily. Okay, lock off is built into this base. You're gonna push this lever here and pull up the panel. This serves as sort of a tensioning panel. So it's gonna do the heavy lifting for you of tightening the vehicle seatbelt and it replaces the need to lock the vehicle seatbelt. So grab your lap and shoulder belt and you can see these very bright blue belt guides. So you know exactly where to put that lap and shoulder belt, buckle it in Get the easy slack out. Like I'm not sweating, I'm fine. I'm just gonna get a little bit of the slack out. And then I'm gonna take our panel here and I'm gonna push it down. And on it, the red indicator turned to green. So I know that that is locked in place. The true test is the test for tightness, which is done at the belt path. Give your seat a shake. Can you move it in more than an inch in any direction? And Obviously I cannot. So we know that it is securely installed. I'm gonna do a double check of the load leg now to make sure this didn't kind of kink it up in any weird way. And it did. I wasn't expecting that. So the indicator on the load leg is red. I am going, I actually lengthened it like one little click and now it has turned to green and I can see that it's totally flush on the vehicle seat. The final step of the seatbelt installation on the base is to position that recline where I need it to go. Let's pretend I'm having a newborn. I'm gonna stick that bubble in the four to 11 pound. And now it's time to put the carrier on. The next step is to put the carrier on the base. And for this seat, there is a red indicator on the release handle that goes away once the carrier is locked securely into the base. I also want you to kind of pull up here on the handle and you can tell that it is completely locked. Sometimes you're gonna hear a little shaking or movement here, guys, that's totally okay. As long as that red indicator has gone away and you can't pull up and release it when you're pulling up at the handle off the base, then you are good to go. The handle, speaking of, for this car seat, it is required to be in this upright position. Click so kindly put a little indicator for us here on the side. So upright position that can vary based on the infant seat that you have. So make sure that you check yours, give your seat a once over, and we are good to go with seatbelt installation. The third installation method is not using the base at all and just installing the carrier portion directly into your vehicle. The handle has to be in its upright position for this installation method as well. So go ahead and get it in that position. And just to be sure we're clear, you push these little white buttons down on both sides in order to be able to adjust the handle position. So I've got it here in its most upright position. Now, when you're using the vehicle seatbelt to install a carrier, there are often two methods uh, that are allowed. This seat has what's called a European belt path routing. And no, you do not have to be in Europe to use it. So what it means is the shoulder belt is actually gonna route behind the carrier portion of this seat. If for any reason you can't get that to work, you are allowed to use what's called the American belt path routing. The shoulder belt would just go here. But if you have the choice, European belt path routing is definitely preferred and it's allowed on this seat. Let me show you this belt guide back here. It's also blue. If you remember, if you watch the base portions of this video, the belt guide was blue there too. They do it on purpose. So here's the belt guide for where the shoulder belt is going to go. 
To get the vehicle, your setup ready to go, vehicle seat back in the most upright position, there is a line here on the side of the seat, this blue line that has to be parallel with the ground for you to get that proper recline for optimal crash protection and to keep your baby safe and breathing in the seat. I've moved this seat up, uh, the passenger seat up as well to just kind of give me some room to move. So let's make the initial sort of recline adjustment. That's pretty good. It's probably gonna shift a little when I install the seat. So I'll show you how to shimmy the seat if you need to, to get it back in its proper position. Grab your shoulder belt. Again, blue belt guides. This is where the lap belt is gonna go. So I'm routing it on my side over here and also through the belt guide over here and buckling it in. Now this is where, this really isn't that tricky. Like practice this, please practice this a lot of times before you actually get, you know, to hailing a cab in the city or ride sharing or something. So I'm gonna extend the shoulder belt out and pull it back behind the carrier, placing it inside that blue belt guide in the back. Now my seat, I don't know if you could hear that, but I pulled it out far enough that it automatically went into locking mode. So sometimes you can hear a ratcheting sound when your seatbelt has switched to locking mode, which we want when installing a car seat. Hear that? So it already locked for me. If for any reason you've got an extremely long shoulder belt and it has not locked, then pull it out, the, the extra webbing out until it does switch to that locking mode. So now the seat is in, right? And the vehicle seatbelt is locked, but this baby is not tight. So now we've got to get that portion done. Because I just wiggled it, I probably messed up the recline. <laughs> okay, so the best way to get that extra slack out of the vehicle seatbelt is to come down here by the belt buckle side because you're really trying to get the lap belt as tight as possible. So grab your shoulder belt here and you can see like I'm intentionally positioning my body. Sometimes I just forget that I naturally do this where I'm kind of using my boobs, I guess, <laughs> to uh, hold the seat here and my leg is in the back as well. So I'm pushing the seat into the vehicle seat with my body. Can you see how much slack? Watch, see how that slack just comes right out of the lap belt there? Hold that taut and then take your other hand and pull it up and into the retractor. Now let's do the test for tightness. And you can see that literally the seat is not moving at all. Let me check. Okay, the recline has shifted just a teeny bit. So a lot of times when it's installed like this, it's just a matter of shimmying the seat a little bit until you get that level line parallel with flat ground. Let's talk about a little bit of troubleshooting, okay? If for any reason your shoulder belt cannot get long enough, let me show you a trick. We're gonna have to start over. <laughs> Uninstall, which this is what you would do if you were uninstalling, getting ready to get your child out. But I've got to uninstall to let that vehicle seatbelt switch back. We may have to play pretend here because my shoulder belt is long enough, but if you can't get it around the back, then you can purposely, let me buckle this in first. You can purposely shift the seat upward to make it a little bit more compact and pull the shoulder belt around the back. And you can tell, again, if you're paying very close attention, my shoulder belt did actually, it didn't go into locking mode. So see, I definitely shortened the length of that shoulder strap by pulling the carrier up a little bit so now I've locked it. And now I'm gonna do that whole shimmying thing to get it back into place. Get that level line where I want it. And I still have to do the tightening up step, getting that lap belt as secure as I can around the carrier, holding that slack, feeding it up into my other hand. Test for tightness. Recline line looks good. And now that will help you if you have a super short or just on the shorter side, shoulder belt with that little trick to kind of put it upright and then move it back into position.
I wanna remind you that properly installing your car seat is only half of the equation. The other half is ensuring that your baby is buckled in correctly. It's the combination of installation and harnessing that keeps your child safe in the seat. We have a lot more resources on this channel that can help you with proper harnessing and frankly, everything else that you would ever wanna know about car seats. For this Kleckling in particular, there is an infant insert in the seat and because you're gonna hit that button below and grab these printable stickers. You're gonna know that that infant insert can be used up till your child is 11 pounds. Once they hit that 11 pound mark, you need to remove that infant insert and then the seat can like continue being used until they reach the limits like we talked about at the start of the video. All right, so hopefully you're feeling totally confident now about how to install the Kleck Ling in all the different ways. Promise me you're gonna go watch the how to harness a newborn baby in because we know that that's a huge part of the equation to keeping your baby safe in the seat.